Hey viewers, Colton Tackett on Sonic Boom Fan 101 here. In the last video I did, um, I did a side one of this 1994 Chevrolet Chevy Trucks S10 pickup body cassette. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, why are you doing that? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, a I'm acting like Jeffy for some reason. I mean, Jeffy's funny. So, um, anyway, um, just so you know, this video I'm making, this is... This is on side two of this 1994 Chevrolet Chevy Trucks S10 pickup body cassette. Now this will have some like featured options, which are on um, child restraint procedures, trailering tips, off-road driving, four-wheel drive, tilt wheel, and lots of others. Yes, tilt wheel comes after four-wheel drive, if you know what I mean. So um, I don't know why, but I don't really know why. Tilt wheel was included on S10 pickup. I don't, I don't, I don't know why it was included on that tape, but I guess whatever the reason, we're still gonna listen to this tape to see what we get. So three, two, one, play. Oh, frick. let's get to it. This part of the audio program discusses trailering tips, cautions, and special options you may have purchased to customize your new S10. There will be a few seconds of silence between each selection. Child Restraint Procedures For the safety of children and infants traveling in your vehicle, you should always secure them in an infant or child seat restraint according to applicable laws. The information or instructions included with the infant or child seat will specify whether it should be used with an infant or an older child. With General Motors truck safety belts, there is no additional equipment necessary to secure the child or infant seat restraint in your vehicle, unless the restraint requires a top anchor as specified by the restraint installation instructions. If you need to have an anchor installed, you can ask your GM dealer to put it in for you. If you want to install the anchor yourself, your dealer can tell you how to do it. There are some very important procedures to follow when transporting an infant or a child in your vehicle. A few tips to remember are first, never hold a baby in your arms while you're riding in a vehicle. In a collision or a sudden stop, the child will become almost impossible to hold. Second, when using the child seat restraint system, be sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions for the restraint. These restraints use the belt system of your vehicle but the child also has to be secured within the child seat restraint to help reduce the chance of personal injury. The child seat restraint must be properly secured. Third, if your child restraint has a top strap, it will need to be anchored. You can have your GM dealer install an anchor bracket or your dealer can instruct you on the installation procedures if you want to install the anchor yourself. If the child restraint has a top strap, Always secure the restraint device in a location where the top strap can be anchored. Finally, be sure to properly secure any child seat restraint device in your vehicle, even when no passenger is in it. An unsecured child seat can move around in a collision or sudden stop and injure people in the vehicle. For complete information on installing the child or infant restraint system in your vehicle, be sure to read section one of your owner's manual. This information is of vital importance for the safety of you and your passengers. Off-road driving. For the safety of both you and your passengers, please drive your S10 carefully, both on and off-road. Two important factors to keep in mind when off-roading are that you and your passengers must always wear your safety belts, and you should always drive on marked trails only. Also, make sure that the loads that you're carrying are properly secured to prevent them from moving when the terrain gets rough. For more information on off-roading safety tips and driving procedures, be sure to read Section 4 in your Owner's Manual. Trailering Tips Your new Chevy S10 is a versatile vehicle designed to carry people and cargo. But bear in mind that towing a trailer and or carrying cargo will affect handling, durability, and fuel economy. The certification label on the driver's door lock pillar offers information on maximum gross vehicle weight, maximum gross axle weight your vehicle can safely handle, and recommended tire inflation pressures. 
The maximum loaded trailer weight your vehicle can tow depends on the total weight of the vehicle, including passengers, cargo, and additional options purchased. To learn more about the trailering aspects of your vehicle, your Chevy dealer can supply you with product literature, which includes trailering tips and cautions, and can assist you in determining that your needs don't exceed the load or trailering capabilities of your new vehicle. When trailering, you need to keep in mind that if the loaded weight of the trailer exceeds 1,000 pounds, the trailer must have its own brakes. And the hitch you use on your S10 is important as well. If you're using an aftermarket hitch, make sure it is properly installed and adjusted. Two very important hitch considerations for trailer weights over 2,000 pounds are that one, the hitch is of the frame-mounted weight distributing type, and two, a sway control system of adequate capacity is installed. Remember, improper trailering or not following recommended trailering tips and cautions may cause handling problems. Be sure to read Section 4 of the Owner's Manual for precautions and special techniques to use when towing a trailer. Four-wheel drive. With four-wheel drive, you'll be able to keep your vehicle moving through a wide variety of road conditions. However, you should avoid driving on dry pavement while in four-wheel drive. Driving with four wheels engaged on dry pavement can increase tire wear, cause hard transfer case shifting, and reduce fuel economy. If you have a manual Instatrack system, you can shift from two-wheel drive to four-high or from four-high back to two-wheel drive while the vehicle is moving without pressing the transfer case shift lever button. The front axle portion of the diagram on the transfer case shift console will light up when you shift into a four-wheel drive mode. And remember that it's normal for the front axle light to come on or go off shortly after shifting into or out of a four-wheel drive mode. However, if the front axle light does not come on after shifting into a four-wheel drive mode, or the light stays on after shifting out of a four-wheel drive mode, see your authorized Chevrolet dealer for a system check. To shift a vehicle with a manual Instatrack system into or out of 4 low or neutral, vehicle speed must be below 3 miles per hour. To begin this process, place the transmission in neutral if you have an automatic transmission or depress the clutch if you have a manual transmission. Then press the transfer case shift button on the shifter lever and shift with one continuous motion. Don't pause in the neutral range of the transfer case when shifting into 4 low as this could result in some gear clash. And keep in mind that the neutral position of your Instatrack system should only be used if the vehicle is being towed. Refer to sections 4 and 5 of the owner's manual for additional information on towing your S10. If your S10 is equipped with the electronic transfer case, shifting from two-wheel drive to four high or four low is as easy as pushing a button on your instrument panel and following some simple procedures. Three switches near the center of the instrument panel control the transfer case. Two high, four high, and four low. If the light on any of these switches is illuminated, the transfer case is in that particular mode. To shift from two high to four high, simply push the four high button in. And to shift from four high to two high, push the two high button in. Shifting between two high and four high can be performed at any speed. To shift into 4 low from 2 high or 4 high, press the 4 low button in. Pressing the 4 low button in will cause the light on the button to blink, indicating that the transfer case is about to shift into 4 low. You can press the 4 low button in while the vehicle is moving, but the transfer case will not shift into 4 low until vehicle speed is less than 3 miles per hour and the automatic transmission is in neutral where the clutch is depressed with a manual transmission. When the transfer case is in 4 low, the light on the rocker switch will remain illuminated. To shift out of 4 low, push either the 4 high or 2 high button in. Now, if you slow the vehicle to under 3 miles per hour with the automatic transmission in neutral or the clutch depressed with a manual transmission, the transfer case will engage the drive mode you've selected. For more information on transfer case operation, helpful off-road driving tips and maintenance procedures, See sections 2, 4, and 6 of your owner's manual. Alright, next up is tilt wheel. Tilt wheel. To change the angle of the steering wheel, pull the short lever on the steering column behind the turn signal lever towards you, 
and raise or lower the wheel to suit your needs. Pretty quick, wasn't it? Cruise control. The cruise control switches are mounted on the multi-function turn signal lever. To engage the cruise control, first turn it on, then accelerate to the desired speed and push the set button on the end of the turn signal lever. The cruise control disengages when you depress the brake pedal or move the control switch to the off position. The off position will erase the memory of the cruise control. <laughs> to resume your preset speed after braking, Sorry about that, momentarily I move the switch to the RA, resume accelerate position. At speeds above 25 miles per hour, the system automatically recalls your preset speed. For more information on cruise control, see section 2 in your owner's manual. Air conditioning. Besides the heating and ventilation operations described earlier in this presentation, there are additional controls for the air conditioner. The upper rotary switch enables you to change the interior air temperature from cold to hot. The lower rotary switch allows you to select various heating and cooling functions. For maximum cooling, the max AC position recirculates interior air with very little outside air. Use this mode with the temperature lever at its coldest position. The norm AC position pulls in outside air, cools it, and then discharges it through the upper dashboard outlets. The bi-level AC position directs cooler air through the upper outlets and warmer air through the lower outlets. The blend position directs air through both the instrument panel defrost and lower outlets. As a special note, if your S10's air conditioning system requires service, be aware that it uses the environmentally friendly R134A refrigerant. This refrigerant requires specific service procedures to prevent system contamination. For further information, refer to your owner's manual. AM FM stereo radio with Seek Scan, digital clock, and stereo cassette tape player. To play an audio tape, insert it with the exposed edge entering first. The tape will snap into position when it's fully inserted. Forward and reverse arrows allow you to move through your tape quickly. The DNR, Dynamic Noise Reduction button, reduces background hiss on both the radio and cassette tapes. To switch playing sides of the tape without removing it, press the upper left volume control knob. As a special note, avoid using C120 tapes in your player. These tapes are very thin and may break or get tangled in the drive mechanism. Well, that wouldn't for be good at all. For and maintenance tips for your tape player, see section 3 of the owner's manual. Tapes? Getting tangled is a bad idea. AM stereo, FM stereo radio with seek, scan, digital clock, <laughs> and stereo cassette tape player with search, repeat, and graphic equalizer. To play an audio tape, insert it with the exposed edge entering first. The tape will snap into position when it's fully inserted. To advance the tape, press the forward button. To rewind to an earlier portion of the tape, press the reverse button. To stop the forward or reverse movement, press the opposite button lightly. To listen to the next selection on a cassette tape, first, slide the search button to the right, and then depress the forward button. The tape will automatically stop at the next selection. By using the reverse button, you can replay the tape selection, which you just played. To switch playing sides of the tape without removing it, press the upper left volume control knob. The loudness button boosts the bass frequencies when the stereo is played at low volume. The CRO2, chromium dioxide button, adjusts the audio quality for chromium or metal tapes. And the AMST button is for AM stereo broadcast. The graphic equalizer adjusts the frequency response ranges of your stereo. As a special note, be sure to avoid using C120 tapes in your player. These tapes are very thin and may break or get tangled in the drive mechanism. Again, that would not for be good. For information and maintenance tips for your tape player, see section 3 of the owner's manual. I would hate it when, ta when tapes would get tangled. Engine block heater. This feature is designed to keep your engine block warm for improved cold weather starting. To use the heater, open the hood and unwrap the electrical cord stowed in the engine compartment. Plug the cord into any three-pronged 110 volt AC outlet. If the cord is too short, use a heavy-duty three-prong extension cord. 
This completes part two of this audio presentation. We thank you for taking the time to listen. And again, congratulations on the purchase of your S10. Well, folks, that's going to be it for this video on the 1994 Chevrolet Chevy Trucks S10 pickup audio cassette. When I get the Chevrolet Camaro 1994 cassette, you know, the 1994 Chevrolet Camaro cassette, um, I'm going to be, a, uh, I'll be doing a video on that, too. Now, this is the second Chevrolet audio cassette to not have music selections at the end of side two. I'm just not sure if I'm going to get any more Chevrolet audio cassettes that have music selections at the end of side two, because... I'm not sure if there's that much choices left. But still, um, maybe when I get the 1994 Chevrolet Camaro audio cassette, maybe I'll find out. But anyway, viewers, um, I've got to go. But I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Colton Tackett on Sonic Boom Fan 101 saying, Happy driving, and I'm signing off. Peace out, y'all.